Hey friends, welcome to Houseplant Tips and Tricks. My name is Nick, that is Muffin, and today we're gonna repot some plants. This series is sponsored by repotme.com. Get all of your indoor gardening supplies delivered to your door from one place. Repotme.com has practically everything you need for your orchids, succulents, and houseplants, including handmade potting mixes, planters, fertilizers, and much more. Spring is here and the growing season is finally upon us and there is literally no better time of year to repot your plants. Whether your plants have outgrown their planter from last year and it's time to get them in something a little bit larger or you're just getting the plant out of its plastic nursery planter for the first time after bringing it home, this is the time to do so. However, I've admittedly been slacking a little bit when it comes to my spring preparation and the only soil I currently have on hand is cactus mix. And spoiler alert, I do not have any cacti or succulents to repot today. So I'm gonna show you how I'm going to make this cactus mix work for any houseplant that comes our way to help you understand how to amend your soil mixes in case you ever find yourself in a pinch like I am right now. But to go ahead and get started, let's go ahead and pick out our first victim. I shouldn't call it a victim, I should call it a patient. We're gonna be helping them today. So I have this lovely variety of Schifflera arboricola. This is an umbrella tree. This is a slightly different variety. I like purchased this from an online store as like a more out there variety of Schifflera arboricola, but honestly, it looks pretty pretty much like every single one I see available in store. I'm pretty sure I just potted this one up into this yellow planter last year. It was in a four inch terracotta planter before, so significantly smaller. And it has grown so well in this planter. The roots are coming out of the bottom of this planter right here and attaching themselves to the saucer. So that's how I know it's definitely time for this to come out. And we gotta do our best to not damage these roots. But if we do break a couple off, it's not that big of a deal because we're right at the beginning of the growing season and those roots will regrow very easily and very quickly. So I guess, Step one is to just carefully remove these roots. I guess it wasn't that difficult at all. I did not break a single one, but you can see just this mass of roots that are coming out down here. We wanna kinda of loosen them up so that we can get them up through the drainage hole without breaking them. That's our second challenge of not breaking the roots. And as you can see, as I'm kind of just detangling it here, a little bit of bits and pieces are falling off. But like I said, that's literally not a big deal at all. In fact, a little bit of a root trim is usually a good thing, but you might just wanna be using pruners instead of your fingers for that, if that's what you're trying to accomplish. But there we go, we have these decently untangled and let's just go ahead and loosen this guy out by just shaking the trunk and oh gosh, got a little bit of a traffic jam going on here. Too many roots trying to get through this hole at one time. And there we go. Just go ahead and put this planter to the side for right now. Maybe we'll go ahead and use it for another plant later in this video. I love using yellow planters with very green plants or plants that have any yellow accenting on them. So I think we're gonna use another yellow planter for this plant because I really just have an affinity for this plant inside. Yellow planters, you can see the roots are looking fabulous. The ones that are still inside the planter that haven't worked their way outside the bottom. So let's just go ahead before we move on any further and just tease these roots. Back when I first got into indoor gardening, I would often just buy a plant take it out of its planter, not mess with the roots at all, plant it inside whatever vessel I wanted to, and when I would go to repot it a couple years later, or maybe when it doesn't make it and I go to empty out the planter, I find that those roots haven't traveled whatsoever. So it really is very important to give a little bit of a tease to those roots to let them know that it's time to branch out. And you can also just see from this abundance of roots that we really do need to go slightly larger with our planter, even if we were to just repot it back in here, that would not do this plant any justice because I literally can't even fit it inside. So I found this yellow planter in my planter storage. Always keep a bunch of planters around. I feel like as an indoor gardener, it just really does me a lot of favors when I have a bunch of planters to choose from whenever I'm doing my repotting. And this is going to be perfect. The perfect size, it's about two inches in diameter larger than our last one, which is usually as big as you want to go when you're potting up your plants. But because this one just has such an abundance of roots, I think that two inches in diameter larger is going to be the exact amount that we were looking for. This Chef Flera is going to be pretty easy going when it comes to a cactus mix. I think we could probably just use this cactus mix straight from the bag, if I'm being honest. When it comes to mixes straight from the bag, if you're buying it from like a big box store, I would never recommend using that mix without amending it whatsoever. But Rapami.com's mixes are made with a lot of high quality ingredients. In particular, they use coconut coir versus peat moss. Peat moss is going to be what most of the potting mixes available at your local houseplant stores are going to be made of. And that peat moss is not only not very sustainable, but not the most ideal 
base to use with your plants because peat moss can become hydrophobic very easily while coconut coir is much better at moisture retention. So even though this is a cactus mix because it is made with coconut coir, it's going to have a slightly better moisture retention than one that was made with peat moss. So I'm thinking for the Schifflera that we're not going to have to mess with the soil too much. There's already a good amount of perlite and pumice added into this mixture, which is what we're going to be looking for to help increase drainage with our Schifflera. So I think we're going to use mostly this cactus mix right here. Let's say roughly three parts of the classic cactus and succulent mix from repotme.com. And then let's add one part of perlite or sponge rock. This is also available from repotme.com and I will leave this link to my description below. Any of the products that I'm talking about from repotme.com today, you'll be able to find down my description below. And you can use code Nick to save 10% on any potting mix from repotme.com. So let's go ahead and add roughly one part of this perlite or sponge rock into this mix. We'll probably be adding most of this bowl. Let's give it a mix. A spoon is my favorite gardening tool. Honestly, a spoon, a kitchen bowl, and my potting tray from apotme.com, I'll also leave this link to my description below, are the number one things that I use in my home for potting. I don't have any special shovels or trowels or anything. A spoon and a bowl and a tray is all I need. So the soil is looking really excellent. You can see that all that extra perlite really added some extra grit to the soil, which is going to allow it to drain even better than it was going to before. So let's get our planter. We'll throw a couple scoops in. Maybe I should go get a plastic nursery planter actually because that makes scooping soil a little bit easier. I would say this is also one of my favorite little tools to keep around if it even classifies as a tool. It's just so easy to just dump the perfect amount of soil in and not waste the time that the spoon was gonna waste, you know? I might actually put a little too much soil in. I put about two inches of soil in there. Yeah, let's take a little bit out because these roots are just so vast. We're going to place this down in here with just about like half a centimeter of soil in the bottom of the planter, get our nursery planter and just Fill it up while we're holding this in place so that some of that soil can fall below and just kind of envelop those roots. Give them a nice little hug. And now that this is in place, I can let go, go a little bit more willy-nilly with my soil. And then I wanna make sure that there's no air pockets left in the soil. So I'm gonna first give it a good bank. Always wanna let your plants know who's boss. And I'm gonna take my fingies, my phalanges, and I'm just gonna go around the perimeter of the soil, pushing down slightly, not too hard. I don't wanna pack it down. I just wanna make sure that there's no air bubbles because what would happen if there is air bubbles is I'm gonna go ahead and water my plant and then all that soil is just going to sink down as those air bubbles fill up. So we're going to avoid that by doing this. And then I just grabbed a little paintbrush to go ahead and just easily clean out this saucer here that's attached. So it just can be a little, a little difficult to keep it clean. Paintbrush also comes in handy in so many other aspects of indoor gardening, particularly cleaning off your cacti, any spots that are too spiny to get your fingers in, or even just a quick dust off of the leaves or around the perimeter of the planter. So highly recommend keeping one of these around. And there we have it. We have our plant potted up in this plant. I can't believe how big it's grown in the last couple of years. It was seriously very small when I got it. And it's still pretty small. As far as umbrella trees go, these can grow to be quite large. The largest plant I have in my home is a type of umbrella tree, but this smaller leaf variety he just has much more of a space on like a desk or a table, at least for now. Give it a couple more years and it's probably going to be a floor plant, but until then, I'm just enjoying the time I have before it's in a planter that's too big to be on a table. So I think I got at least another year, but the way those roots were growing last time, I'm not necessarily convinced. I'm gonna go ahead and water this after I'm done filming. I'm just gonna go ahead and throw everything I planted up today in the shower, give them a good drink. But typically when you're repotting your plants, you wanna go ahead and give them a good watering right after you pot them, unless they are a cacti or a succulent in which you're gonna let them sit for a couple of days and then you're gonna water them to avoid any rotting because if you let them sit dry for a couple of days, then they're going to be searching out the water, which they might not be right when you pot them up in the soil. So a little hot tip from me, to you. Why don't we remove this tray of bitters because they're not really doing anything for our aesthetic in the background of this video and we'll move this here for right now. The bitters are going back once this video is done. I think we're gonna repot these next. So these are Hoya Lacunosa Royal Flushes. I talked about these in my last plant haul video. I found these at a local houseplant store for $4 each, which is a steal in comparison to what I normally see online. So I couldn't help myself but get two. And they've been sitting in my home acclimating for the last two months or so. And now it is time to repot them. So I just found this little tiny planter that I made back when I did pottery. I think it's just totally adorable and the perfect little size for these two little Hoya lachnoses to get started. They'll probably live in here for this year and then if they start growing well this summertime, I'll probably repot them next year, but if not, 
they'll just live in here for probably another two or three years. So we're gonna make our soil first because these are going to be much less of an ordeal to get out of the planter than the last ones were. So we have this leftover little bits of cactus mix and perlite already in here. And we're not gonna need that much soil for this planter. So I think I might just work with this little tiny amount that's left in here. We're going to amend this slightly more to make it a little bit more appropriate for Hoyas, which honestly, this cactus mix with perlite is pretty good for Hoyas as is. I just wanna go the extra mile. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm gonna add a little bit extra grit to the soil. So I have some pumice here. This is very similar to perlite. It's just more rocky. Definitely gonna add a little bit more weight to the soil and a lot more drainage. And then I'm also going to add some fine orchid bark. You can use larger orchid bark. I just much prefer this finer orchid bark, both for the way that it looks and the way that it works in my soil. Go ahead and give that a nice little stir. And you can see, hopefully you can see because the camera's pretty far away whenever I do repotting videos, but this soil has a lot of texture to it. That pumice and bark is going to be making up a lot of this soil. And it's probably like only one third or one quarter of that actual potting mix. And then the rest of it is going to be all those amendments, the perlite, the pumice, the bark. You could even add some charcoal if you wanted to, but that gritty soil mixture is going to be exactly what these epiphytic Hoyas are going to be looking for. So let's just tease these Hoyas out of their planters that they're in the soil barely any roots in this guy. So definitely a good thing that we are doing a small planter. And I'm repotting these when they're dry, especially when you're working with more succulent plants. You always wanna do your repotting when the soil is dry, or at least on the drier side. Moist is okay. Wet, unless it's a rescue mission, I would just wait a week until it's completely dry. It's not that many roots on this guy, so let's add like an inch of soil in here to get started. I'm going to place these in where I see fit. I think this one kind of leaning over the edge here is kind of a good vibe. So let's just go ahead and dump this little bit of extra soil in on top to bury these roots, probably all we needed right there. And after seeing those roots, I'm feeling much more confident that this soil mix, which is much more geared towards Hoyas versus whatever terrarium mix that they were using at the greenhouse where these were grown. This is probably going to do a lot better, especially now that the growing season is upon us. It's probably just going to start shooting off all this new growth that I'm seeing here. Hopefully we don't stunt it from repotting it. Sometimes I notice that happened with Hoyas, but I don't know. I just want to get these potted together already in this cute little planter. This one's just a little baby. So we're just going to give a little, little love pats. No spanks here. We're going to, we're going to wait till it's older for that. I think that's all we need to do. I think it looks fantastic. It's nothing much right now, but just those two little Hoyas potted up together, I think are making much more of a statement than they were by themselves in their plastic nursery planters. Plus, I'm thrilled to get to use one of my planters that I made once upon a time. Yeah, this is looking adorable. I will probably water this Hoya right away. I know I said that I wouldn't water succulents or cacti right away, but Hoyas are kind of in the middle of that category and they do prefer their roots to be on the moister side. Not wet, but moist. So I don't want to let this sit dry for too long. So I will go ahead and repot this, or I'm sorry, water this once I am done filming today's video. Let's move on to a more tropical houseplant so I can really show you how I'm going to make this cactus mix work for me. So I have, oh God, I got to clean up a little bit. I have this uh, philodendron, summer glory right here. And I have it sitting inside this larger planter in its original planter that I potted it in, this tiny little terracotta planter. I got this like a year or two ago in a four inch plastic nursery planter. I potted it up in this five or six inch terracotta planter. And now it's clear it's time to repot it in something larger. I have this sitting in underneath my trellis in my bedroom. It's not gonna climb up the trellis really, I'm pretty sure in the way that this Philodendron Summer Glory goes. It's just kind of there to be the star of the show at the base of the trellis. And all of the plants are in these larger terracotta planters. So I figure, why not get it in here? Would a plant like this prefer a ceramic planter? Probably, especially if I'm gonna be working with cactus and succulent mix, but I'm gonna make it work. It's what I'm here to do today. So I have this beautifully weathered terracotta planter. Some people might disagree with me. I love the way weathered terracotta planters look. If you don't like that, maybe just don't buy terracotta because this is what's gonna happen to it over time. Let's clean off the summer glory a little bit. We have some yellow leaves at the base of it. Hoping that there's no thrips problems on this because whenever I'm dealing with philodendron gloriosum anything. I'm always having thrips. I just got a new philodendron gloriosum recently. I talked about it in my last plant haul. Um, this That's a parent of this philodendron summer glory, by the way, and it already has thrips. It didn't have any pest problems in my home, but I brought in this gloriosum and now it already has thrips, but fortunately it was not very expensive. So we can just take it as it is. You know what I mean? Anyway, I have these uh, pruners from repotme.com to help just clean off some of these leaves a little bit easier. I have this mystery plant growing in the back here. I'm pretty sure it's a spider plant. At first I thought it was a weed, but my cat started chewing on it in the way that she loves to chew on spider plants. So let's go ahead and make our soil mix. We're just going to keep this little bit of remnants that we have from our, our Hoya mix. It's really not going to be making that much of a big deal 
here with our philodendron. So I'm going to add a heaping amount of this cactus mix because we have a decently large planter to work with today. That drainage is pretty good right now, but with philodendrons, it's always good to add a little bit of perlite in. So I'm just going to go ahead and dump the rest of the perlite that I have here in this bowl. Ooh, a little dusty. That's the one thing about perlite. It's kind of why I prefer pumice to perlite. It's not dusty. So take it as you will. Both essentially do the same thing. I would just probably use perlite more for a philodendron or an aeroid than I would pumice. Let's get some of that orchid bark added in here as well to give those roots something to grab onto. I'm probably just going to do a little bit more than that, like a full nursery planter's worth in this large planter here. And then to help this soil just stay a little bit more on the moist side, particularly Philodendron Gloriosum likes to be a little bit more moist in its soil and this cactus mix is going to be avoiding that and this terracotta as well. And knowing that this Philodendron Summer Glory is closely related to Gloriosum, let's go ahead and add just a little bit of sphagnum moss into this mixture. This moss is going to hold on to moisture really well and these little bits of moss might stay a little bit more moist when the soil is drying out. So that can be very helpful especially when we are working with this cactus mix here. And I'm kind of reaching a little bit more towards like the powdery stuff in the bottom of the bag versus the large strands. There really isn't that big of a deal or a difference. It's just going to disperse a little bit better. And if I didn't have all of these little bits at the bottom, I could go ahead and take scissors and just cut up these strands into smaller pieces. But I'm kind of happy with what I'm working with right here. So let's just go ahead and get this evenly dispersed. You might need to break up some of your strands as well because they'll stick together when they're dry. And that's another thing I should mention. Typically you're working with your sphagnum moss when it's moist, but I'm adding it to the soil dry because everything else is dry and I want this to disperse as evenly as possible. And that's going to be a lot more difficult if some of it's wet and some of it's not. All right, there we go. This mix is looking fabulous. This is like the most ideal soil mix, regardless of the fact that it's cactus mix for this philodendron gloriosum. In fact, I don't even think at this point, the fact that there's cactus mix in here is hindering this plant's future process at all because the soil mix is just chef's kiss. Let's get a big old scoop going in here. I think that's probably good enough to go ahead and get started. Let's grab our philodendron once again, grab the little trunk, let's shake it a little bit. You could use a knife, go if you're not as daring as I am, if you're worried you're gonna like break your plant, you can take a knife and go around the perimeter of the, the planter. Sometimes I have to do that when I'm working with something that roots might grab on a little bit to the ceramics, but this philodendron and that chiflera were not going to be causing us this kind of issues. Wow, we can see these roots. Oh, it's a, it's a spider plant. I was like, wow, what a tuberous root system for a philodendron, but it's the spider plant over here that's just kind of living. I'm keeping it, you know, sh should I remove it? I don't know, maybe I'm like, I don't know. I kind of want to remove it now. I'm like, grow up this green spider plant by itself. It's just like a little scrap and keep it somewhere that muffin won't be able to chew it. You know what? Why not? Why the hell not? These roots are looking like freaking radishes. So it's obviously going to survive by itself. So we will pot it up afterwards. Give me a moment, but let's go ahead and tease these roots. I love how the roots of this plant are red. It's not like you're ever going to see them often, but just it's the little things, you know? So let's situate this plant where I'm gonna want it. I kind of want it closer to the edge here because it's already spilling off the side and I'm really enjoying this philodendron. I'm not like a huge philodendron guy anymore. I feel like I've kind of fallen off the aeroid boat in the last year or so just because I find them to be such pest magnets and I don't know if I'm just not caring for them correctly because I usually find the plants that are pest magnets are the plants that are stressed. They're attracting the pests because they're stressed. So whatever I'm doing in my home to the plants is not <laughs> correct, dare I say. But sometimes I have a philodendron growing perfectly fine and it just gets covered with thrips and I just like don't know what I'm doing wrong. And I'm sure it's my environment and that's just it right there. But if that's the thing, I can't really change my environment and where I live. So at this point, I'm just trying to not grow plants that don't grow well for me or just cause me issues. But so far, this philodendron summer glory has not been giving me those same issues that the philodendron gloriosum did. I just added a little bit too much extra soil on this top here. So in order to not bury the plant, I'm just removing a little bit of the extra soil from up top. But it is mildly ironic the way I'm able to grow this plant so well right now when I struggle with growing not only philodendron gloriosum, but also philodendron macaulay's finale or i have in the past which is the other parent of this plant the summer glory so yeah i don't really know how that works the hybrids are usually created to be easier than the plants that they were hybridized from not all of the time but most of the time so i think that rings true with this philodendron summer glory do our pots thanks she's all grown up so she can take it and once again go around the perimeter with our fingies 
and I can see that the soil, you're not gonna be able to see it from this angle, but the soil kind of fell down right here from my spanking and my, my finger pressing. So I'm gonna go ahead and just add a little bit of extra soil right there to even it out. And like I said, if I didn't do that prior, when I went ahead and watered this plant, that soil would have just fallen on the side and then I'd have to refill it with more soil and then they'd be not the same moisture. And then that would just be confusing for me and the plant. So yeah, let's avoid that. And there we have it. We have this beautiful philodendron summer glory potted up in this beautiful weathered terracotta planter. I love the way it looks just starting to spill over the side of this pot and hopefully it continues to grow well because like I said, philodendron gloriosum usually needs to root down and creep along the planter. Maybe I didn't say that, but philodendron gloriosum needs to grow along the surface to root down in the soil and then usually won't grow as well when it starts to spill off the side. But just knowing how philodendron macaulay's finale grows, the other parent of this plant, I'm hopeful that this will be able to start to creep off the side of the planter and maybe one day be like even like a hanging planter that just, you know, this would be really cool hanging up where I could even attach like an orchid clip to it and just hang it without the base. I don't know, lots of options. We're going to cross that bridge when we get there because we just repotted this thing. So yeah, we have some time. I have a little bit extra of this aroid soil mix. So let me go see if there's another aroid I can go ahead and pot up. Okay, we might figure out a different planter situation because I think I'm gonna include this steak because we have this amidrium medium silver. It's like a newer amidrium on the market. The soil is perfectly dry. It's time to repot it. It's just started growing for me. I'm thinking, why don't I put it on this wood stake and then I can put it inside like one of my greenhouse cabinets so that the moisture stays up. And I think that'll just look better. It's not exactly what I want. But, oh my God, I forgot about the spider plant. Okay, we'll do the spider plant after this, it's fine. I'm not sure if I wanna put it in this little terracotta planter that I had it sitting in because it's just, it's not that sexy of a planter that I would like for this beautiful plant. We could con consider this yellow guy. I think that would actually look pretty cool with, mm, like not obsessed. I like it, but the idea of putting this in like the stake in here, it's not doing it for me. Let me go. I'm gonna go over to my planter storage. I will be right back. All right, I quickly found two options. I found this weathered rustic terracotta planter right here. I think that might be the better option if I'm being honest. Looks pretty good in there, especially with that wood stake, it would look pretty good. And I found this smaller, so it's probably not going to work. Uh, red, just like generic uh, ceramic planter, mass produced vibes, which the red and the blue looks awesome, but it's like, it would look great if I wasn't putting it on the moss. And I don't want to put it on the stake. You don't understand how much I don't want to put this thing on a stake, but it's not gonna grow if it's not on a stake the way that I want it to. <sighs> so let's give in, we're gonna put it in here. We're gonna need a little bit more soil made. I'm just adding a little bit of our cactus mix, a little bit of our bark. Feeling a little lazy, I only had this little bowl of pearl. I don't feel like going to pour more. So I'm just gonna throw in a small handful of pumice. But like I said, perlite is a little bit more ideal when it comes to repotting aeroids. So there's already plenty of perlite in here from the mix prior and the cactus mix itself has a pretty decent amount of perlite in it. So I'm not really that concerned. And I guess since we added all that stuff, we should go ahead and add another little handful of our sphagnum moss. Once again, reaching towards the bottom of the bag for all that good dusty stuff that will disperse well into our soil mix. Wow, I wonder if I have any more aeroids to repot because I feel like I just made too much mix. Anyway, let's go ahead and throw in a nice little layer in the bottom of our planter here, just about an inch or so to get started. Let's get our nice imidrium silver medium, I'm sorry, medium silver. Oh, how dare I mix that up? We got some really nice roots on this thing. So I think it's good that we're going to the size planter that we are. Loosen these up. I might even kind of like squeeze it a little bit to make the, instead of a circle, it's more ovular. So I can kind of just like really like get it in the planter the way that I want it to. And before we go ahead and add any of our soil in, I'm gonna take our stake and put it where I want it. Make sure that we have it somewhere where we won't have to push down on it so we don't damage any roots. And I think we're good to go. Where'd I, oh, it's <laughs> under here. I was like, where did I put my little scooper? Let's go ahead and fill this guy up. These wood stakes are not really viable to grow houseplants up if they're not in like a greenhouse controlled condition. So a greenhouse cabinet is perfectly fine. That's probably where I'm going to end up putting this. But unlike the moss poles, the wood is just so difficult to keep moist if you're outside of that greenhouse condition. So it's just a lot more difficult for the plant to adhere to it. But if it is inside a greenhouse, I will find that the plants will just gravitate towards that moist wood. I'm gonna be more deliberate with my fingies on this one instead of any spanking because that will just 
cause our little steak to fall over probably. And this of course, once it's watered, it's going to help keep this, I mean, it's not going anywhere right now, but like once I water this plant, that steak is going to be pretty well set in there in comparison to the way it could probably wobble around a little bit while I'm working with this dry soil. And what I could do from here is like use some Velcro plant tie, which I probably should actually, do I have any in the vicinity? Let me go look. Yes, I was able to find some. So I'm just gonna take some Velcro plant tie, find whatever, I think just this one to be honest is the one I'm gonna have going up it for right now. Just to give it a little visual head start, take this runner and we're going to tie it to the pole. You don't have to use Velcro. You can use like whatever you have on hand. It's just what I like to keep around. Hopefully with the support, these leaves will start to mature a little bit and form that fun wonky oven mint leaf shape that this Amidrium medium silver gets. If you Google it, you'll see what I'm talking about because obviously I cannot show you that with my current specimen right here, but that's the goal. That's why I got this plant. I would like to see it looking its fullest potential by the end of the summer, but I think I might be, <laughs> I think I might be a little hopeful there, but you know what, we'll see. And that was fortunately like the perfect amount of soil. I used up all of that aeroid mix. So now can move on to something else. We got to pop up this little spider plant. Let me go find a little planter for this. This is kind of cute. I'm not a huge blue person, but it's a little bit more turquoise and to be honest this spider plant is so small we're just going to work with the remnants that we have in here throw a little bit in this bowl plain cactus mix this good cactus mix with the coconut coir is going to be perfectly suitable for this spider plant so i'm just gonna throw a little bit in with my hands don't even need to try that hard and place this thing in here fill it up and put it somewhere where muffin cannot reach because this thing i used to keep this on top of the kitchen cabinets and muffin would go up there and just like hide behind this and start chewing on it i wouldn't even notice because i didn't even really notice that this spider plant was there so yeah it's right now a piece of grass coming out of a, a little planter here but you know what it's still freaking adorable. Nobody can tell me anything otherwise. And last, but most certainly not least, let's pot up this golden pothos. I got it at a big box store recently and then I found this nice planter at one of my local house plant stores and I just thought they would look so good together, but I hate the way that the top of the planter has a lip, so it's like sitting inside awkwardly. So we just gotta go ahead and plant this thing inside. It's gonna be a pretty quick process. So for this pothos today, we're once again going to use our cactus and succulent mix. We're going to use a good amount of that, probably roughly 50% of our mix is going to be this. And then we're going to add a good amount of our bark. Probably like 25% of the soil mix is going to be that bark. So like a good barky mix for our pothos. And this is honestly looking good enough, but I'm only at 75% of the ratio I've been talking about. So let's go ahead and we're gonna add a little bit of pumice, just a little bit, like 10%. And then to keep the moisture up on our mix, let's go ahead and add some sphagnum moss. We're not gonna be adding as much as we added into the mixes for our philodendron and our imidrium. Pothos just don't need it, but they would enjoy it. Let's get a good, a good sprinkling of that. And I'm making a little bit extra because I'm not really fond of the big box mix that that pothos has grown in. So I'm probably going to be removing a lot of it. It's definitely made up of peat moss and primarily peat moss because that thing dries out so fast and it gets so hydrophobic. So it's just time to get rid of that mix. All right, this is looking pretty good. Let's go ahead and get our pothos, a little yellow leaf or brown leaf in here. So let's just get rid of that, throw it over yonder. And we're gonna take our plant out of its planter. The hell is that? What? <laughs> Never had that before. Let's loosen up these roots. And while we're doing so, we're going to be kind of just like letting this soil just like fall into our tray here. Can move this so you can kind of see a little bit better, but I'm literally just like tearing it open. Pothos are strong. It's not going to die or have any problems from us being a little bit more aggressive with this root system. We're just kind of tickling that soil so it falls into our basin below. Giving it a really good shake to get as much of that soil off as I can. And this is what we're left with. I think that's a much more appropriate amount of this bad soil. It's really not going to be making that much of a difference inside of our planter. We're gonna go ahead and add probably about two inches of soil into the base of this planter. Let's take our, oh God, soil in my eye. Ooh. 
I'm gonna take it and I'm going to put it inside of our planter. I'm gonna do this with the back facing you so it's a little bit easier to see. I'm going to make sure that I have all those roots in there because there were like spaghetti strings hanging off so it can be pretty easy for them to work their way out of the planter. All right, and this is set on top of that soil base that we put down with a little yellow leaf. Get out of here and we'll start taking our soil and we're going to be filling it around the perimeter and since this planter is only like nine inches in diameter versus our hanging basket was eight inches there's not going to be a lot of room to get that soil around so we're going to have to go ahead and do some spanking preemptively i've been a pot spanking advocate for many years i think it's one of the most important steps when it comes to potting up your plants don't skip it i think that's um oh nope just kidding there's a big air pocket back here Almost missed that. All right, now I think we're good. Couple extra spanks. Don't think I knew who was boss yet, so I just had to make sure. But this looks so much better, just not seeing that lip coming out of the top is just ugh, so much better. And I can actually water it inside the planter here before the water would just fall right through and make a total mess, so I had to pull it out, throw it in the shower. Now I can just bring the step ladder over to my cabinets, kitchen area, and just take the watering can up there and I'm not gonna have to worry about it the way I don't have to worry about it with my other plants. I see there's a bunch of that soil that is caught in our little tray down here. So let's get our brush once again. And I think that's about it for today's video or springtime repotting. Like I said, it's the best time of year to do any repotting. I think I got a lot done in a pretty short amount of time today. And all these plants are going to have a really nice head start for the growing season. As I mentioned, I'm gonna take all of these over to the bathroom. I'm gonna throw them all in the shower. I'm gonna go ahead and give them all a really good saturation of their soils. But like I said, if you were doing this with cacti and succulents maybe wait a couple days after you repot them to go ahead and water them because at that point they're going to be searching out the water and if you water them prior to that they might have some raw issues as they're just getting started so always better safe than sorry but i'm totally digging all of these plant and planter combinations i can't decide which one's my favorite i really like the pothos in this like bluish planter i know i said i don't really like blue but you know what something about this green blue teal of this planter just goes so well with the golden pothos and that yellow planter with the chefflera like match made in heaven i did prefer the designs that this one did have a little bit more but i don't hate it i'm not missing it i think it still looks amazing and the slightly larger planter i think suits it a little bit better if i'm being honest but yeah thank you so much for joining me today i hope your springtime is going to be as prolific as i am setting up mine to be thank you to rapami.com for sponsoring this series as always i will leave any of the products i talked about from them linked in my description below and there was a good handful of them today so definitely check that out and don't forget that you can use code nick to save 10 percent on any potting mix from rapami.com Thank you so much for joining me. If you don't already, you can follow me on Instagram and TikTok at Philly Foliage. Consider liking and sharing this video if you enjoyed it. And I will see you guys in my next video. Have a great day.